Well, hello, everyone. We hope you're doing well. Um, I am Travis Carr, the president of Escapees RV Club and also the co-founder of Escapers. And I'm Melanie Carr, vice president of Escapees and the co-founder of Escapers as well. Uh, so welcome to another virtual campfire. Uh, hopefully we're all settling into the routine, routine of these now. Uh, and if you don't know what a virtual campfire is, they are just a way for us to come together uh, online and kind of feel like we're having a roundtable discussion like you would around a virtual campfire and just bring the community together online. Uh, and the topics, they will range uh, between different things, uh, interview styles, education, stuff like that. And they alternate between the escapees and escapers pages every other week. So you can catch us here every other week on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Central. Yep. And so uh, th this week's a special week for us. Uh, we have a special topic to cover. And in a little bit, we're going to bring on uh, Sean Loring, uh, the SKP CEO, and also some other important guests who are going to participate in this conversation. And really, we're going to hand the mic over to them. Um, so just a little introduction of what we're doing here. Um, the reality is, is, in light of recent events and the struggles our country is currently facing, we and SKP's board of directors feel it is important to share not only our acknowledgement of the situation, but also our support to end inequality. And there's our little child, by the way. <laughs> but um, so, so Escapees, we're, we're dedicating this discussion to focus on the experience of people of color, specifically the black community, um, regarding RV and camping. So while for 42 years, Escapees has been de dedicated to the diversity, equity, and inclusion, we all want this to be a forum for listening and learning. Um, we aim to do our part in supporting Black Lives Matter movement and we work towards meaningful change to improve the RV industry for the black community and by extension, all communities. So with that being said, uh, if we could just please bring on all the guests, uh, we're gonna do a little introduction here. And obviously we hope you, you join in and listen and, uh, and be a part of the conversation with us. Well, hey guys. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello. <laughs> All right. So first, I uh, want to let Sean Loring, our CEO, do a quick introduction. He's joining us uh, on behalf of Escape Bees as well. Um, so, Sean, if you want to go ahead and then we can start going around the table and doing those introductions. But if everybody could just take a moment and give a little history about yourselves and your uh, experience with the RV community or just traveling in the great outdoors, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. Uh, yes, I'm Sean Loring. I'm the uh, the CEO and attorney for the Escapees RV Club. Um, I'm also tasked with being our uh, advocacy director. And uh, I've been formally with the club since, uh, as, as an employee since 19, since uh, 2016, but I've been in the membership for about 25 years. Um, and uh, I have the, the great honor and pleasure of introducing some dear friends. This is Dana and Theron Williams. I will pass the mic. <laughs> Ladies first, yeah. All right. I'm Dana Williams. Uh, I am a trial attorney and have been for the past 25 years. And my husband and I spent a year and a half living in our RV uh, once we became empty nesters and got a lot of experience um, of what it's like living in an RV, dealing with the RV community, um, experiencing what it's is to be a member of escapees and also um just it had some very interesting encounters in the process of purchasing the rv and spent years camping prior to that hi my name's theron uh like my wife said we uh started camping when uh, we pretty much graduated uh, college and we have two daughters uh one graduated high uh, I was last year one's at Texas Tech right now. So we started camping with them when they were little. And we started tent camping at first, and then we moved up to renting travel trailers. After that, we decided, well, I talked her uh, into buying a travel trailer and living in it for a year, which she looked at me like I was crazy starting out. <laughs> do you want to do what? But yeah, we bought a fifth wheel travel trailer and we lived in it for a year and it was a great experience um, while we were building our house. Um, we both have experience with escapees. I wrote an article for them a couple of years ago in the January, February 2018 issue uh, on diminished value. I'm an appraiser. So uh, we do have uh, experience working with Sean 
and the escapees. Well, awesome. Well, thank you guys for sharing. I know we're going to get more into your, your personal life and a little more about uh, some, some details and about your, your experiences. But uh, Earl, if you got, if you want to take it over from here and then we'll bounce over to Sharif. Right on. First of all, how you guys doing? And um, hello to all your members. Uh, my name is Earl B. Hunter Jr. I'm actually the uh, founder and president of uh, Black Folks Camp 2. Uh, I'm actually a former uh, executive in the, uh, in the RV industry. Um, I, uh, I left the industry in October 2019 uh, to start this entity uh, because quite simply, I saw a lack of diversity and inclusion in the, uh, the RVing, the camping industry per se. Uh, my son and I took an amazing trip around the country. We camped 14,000 miles on a trip that I was actually out in sales. And um, we only saw one black family, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And that's kind of how the company was born. Uh, our, uh, our mission is not just to get black folks to camp with black folks. Our mission is to get black folks to camp with any and everyone. And so we promote diversity and inclusion. Awesome. All right, it's Sheree. Okay, cool. Hey everyone, um, I'm Sheree Collier um, from livecampwork.com where I talk all about like how to make money and RV full-time, part-time or seasonally. Um, also recently I, started the Make Money in RV Summit, a virtual summit, and that was sponsored by Escapees. So thank you, Melanie and Travis, for that. Um, and then also the, the author of um, Live Camp Work, um, The Beginner's Guide to War Camping. So my family, which consists of myself and my husband and then our four children, have been RVing full-time for six years. We started back in 2000. 13, we're about to hit that seven year mark and we've had some great experiences. It's, it's been wonderful. We've been all over the East Coast and now we're out um, in Seattle on the West Coast, which was like a dream coming from Georgia. So um, it's just a little bit about us. We've done it this whole time by working along the way, um, whether part time, work camping or remote jobs. and. Yeah, I'm just excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, thank you again. Thank you all so much for joining in and, and, and being part of this conversation. And and, and yeah, we're, we're, all, we're looking forward to it. And I know we had a really, had a really, really great conversation yesterday, kind of getting to know you all <coughs> on a personal level and just, just talking. And it was right. a really great time. And we learned a lot. And it kind of leads me into or us into kind of the first point that I think is important. And that is, what experiences have you personally had and, you know, good, bad, you know, how did they impact your RV lifestyle and, and kind of where, where'd you go from there? And how does that affect the black community as a whole? Uh, you know, not just yourself. How did those impacts um, take effect? So I don't know if anybody wants to raise their hand and jump in on it or how we'd like to go forth from there. I'll, um, I'll start first. Um, you know, I, my, my experience in the outdoor industry and in the, in the camping industry, um, it, it goes to, goes on to say, you know, if you, uh, I, I'm probably one of, of only black executive in the RV industry and I count and it's $141 billion industry. And so for me, uh, it's been a, a daunting task to really get the industry to understand that black folks do camp and, um, but we need to be invited to camp more. More people need to be invited. My experience in the industry has been really good, actually. You know, I've uh, I've had an opportunity to take a company from eight hundred fifteen thousand dollars to seventeen and a half million dollars in four years. So my experience of selling and driving that has really been amazing. What I've learned, though, in the RV industry is that RVers and campers are alike. Period. We have a relationship with the outdoors, and that gives us a relationship to have one another. And I hope that this particular call, uh, not only this call, but hopefully the, the platform that we have right now will encourage more black folks to want to go out and go camping without all the barriers that may be in front of us from the generational fears, which I'll probably get into a little bit later. But I just wanted to uh, give you my experience. It's been amazing. Um, but uh, it can be better, though. It can be better. Yeah. And I think that's uh, important for us. You know, that, that's why we're here as an organization to learn what those barriers are to listen to those and see how a company like Escapees can take part in making a change and getting the industry to come alongside with us as well. Uh, what about you guys, Dana and Theron? 
Well, our personal, uh, I guess, um, experience with, with uh, camping and, and RVing, most of it has been good. I mean, like I say, when we first decided to do it, I'll be honest. I mean, everybody in our family was like, black folks don't do that. <laughs> you know, we just don't go camping, number one, and then we don't live in RVs. We live in houses or apartments or whatever. So that was the big thing for us, um, just getting past, you know, the whole stereotype that black people don't do that. And like Earl said, we have met very few black people out there when we did travel in our RV or, or even at the, the park we were staying at you know, for the year. And uh, when you do, it's like, hey, another black person, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. <laughs> so, but um, I just think getting past that hurdle of the whole stigma of outdoors, bugs, ooh, you know, and stuff like that. And it can be fun. Our girls love it. I mean, they go with their friends now and just getting past that stereotype of black people don't camp, they don't RV or anything like that. And I would just add to that that um, once we did it and we went camping and we built it to a annual family and friends camping trip, then other folks were like, hey, this is a lot of fun. It's not that expensive. We can bring our whole family out here. And to this day, like many of them own rigs and they have started, but I think the key is to, um, as Earl said, invite them and then to make them feel welcome in the community Absolutely. when they get there. And they need to be assured that they're not dealing with crazy um, people treating them a certain kind of way and need to know that it is really a family, um, family oriented um, activity. And, and, it, and I think it boils down to just exposure. When you expose children at a young age or you expose young adults in college or you expose um, young married couples, um, then they are aware of what is possible. And that is what happened to us. And I would encourage the escapees, if that is something you're truly interested in, is to reach out to those um, those social folks. I mean, just reach out to them and offer them and tell them what it's really like instead of letting fear and the unknown drive them away from camping. And what they've heard for generations is, you know, I think something Earl said last night, don't go in the woods. Like that's never ended well for black people. So we need to educate, but also to just expose them to the fun and the family oriented um, activities that are included and that it's a really good time. Um, and I think that can bring a lot of people on board, at least the people that I know. Right. I, got that. I always tell people that the RVing community is super welcoming. It's super welcoming. Um, just from just simple conversations, again, we mentioned this um, yesterday when we were talking about, you know, if you're backing into an RV site, your neighbor is going to come out and help you, like, regardless of if you want his help or not, he's going to come out and help you and kind of, like, guide you into that spot. It's a very welcoming community, but I think, um, and just for my family in uh, specific, we've had mostly great experiences, like 99.8% of the time, it's been wonderful. But there are those little one-offs where you're like, oh, did that just happen? Or did this person just say that? Or, you know, it's just minor uncomfortable situations that we found ourselves in, but mostly great experiences. And I think that until more people try it, they would never imagine as Black Americans that we would enjoy it because we just don't grow up, um, you know, thinking that camping is something that is a great like pastime, let alone a lifestyle. So it's very outside the box. You feel very fish out of water. Um, for my family, when I first brought it up, it was just like, we were so done with that standard American dream. We were like looking for something and we kind of made like this little short list and our being was like at the top of it. But even my own husband was like, I don't think, like, I don't think people do that. And I was like, yeah, 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 they do. They do. And, you know, I pulled up all these, you know, pictures of people online that were doing it. And it was like our own, just, we were super excited. So we didn't, it's going to sound crazy when I say it, but 
we we didn't realize that it was mostly older retired white people who were doing it so when we got out and we decided to do it we were totally like oh gosh like okay we're out here by ourselves like this is a little bit more than maybe what we anticipated and people were very curious as to why we had chose to do it and why we were out here like oh gosh i don't think i've ever run into another young black family on the road so that definitely started a lot of campfire conversations, just random conversations, and people were genuinely, genuinely curious as to why we even made the decision. Um, but again, like I said, if people are not open to the idea of change, of um, like experiencing it and trying it, I don't think um, you would ever realize like, oh, this is really enjoyable. Well, you know what, let me, let me add to this. Um, you know, I think your panelists, not just the panelists, but I think your, your listeners and your members really need to hear this, these couple of points I'm about to make. Um, you know, there, I'm just, just not to sugarcoat any of this and just kind of go right into it. You know, there's some reasons why black folks do not camp. There are systemic reasons why we don't camp, whether people believe them or not. I believe them. I'm a black male. I've gone through those things. And I'm not, we're, my company, we're not a group. We're not a uh, club. We're a company. And what we do is create data and uh, we create data by doing surveys. The number one reason why black folks uh, in the South particularly do not camp is because of generational fear of the woods. Right. The woods and nature has been uh, historically has been one of the worst places for black folks, uh, whether it be uh, seeing their family members lynched, uh, seeing um, their it, we were told not to go in the woods because uh, the boogeyman was in the woods, and if we are being honest with you, the boogeyman was white folks. Um, we were told that uh, the woods was not a safe place. It was a passage to freedom. And so when if it was a passage to freedom, if you were caught in the woods, uh, your freedom could be taken away from you. The second thing is why black folks don't camp, and really RV. This is a very important point to understand. When you think about camping, when most black folks think about camping, we think about tent camping, right? And no restrooms, no amenities, none of those things. So if 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 a culture has just started to really buy houses and own property because of some of the discriminations in regards to banks in the, just in the 60s, um, you're happy to have that home. You really don't want to go outside of that home. And so you don't have any knowledge about how camping can be comfortable with other amenities like an RV. You don't have any knowledge of that. You don't venture into that. Right. As a matter of fact. Two percent, the, the black folks on all there are five thousand RV dealerships, roughly five thousand RV dealerships in America, and less than two percent of black folks ever have ever been on an RV dealership on an RV lot. That's unheard of, right? And so yet we yet black folks spend one point three trillion dollars per year on um, non equity products. The third thing that I think you guys should probably understand. And this is probably the biggest thing that my company and what we do. As a matter of fact, we just had an article that uh, came out today in Backpacker Magazine on our company. And the one thing that we stated and one thing that stated in there is that the industry itself, the industry itself, not just the RV industry, but the outdoor industry is eight hundred and seventy billion dollar industry. This eight hundred and seventy billion dollar entity has not invited black folks to go camp. Most people will say, well, if you want to go camping, maybe you should maybe you should just go. That's your choice. Well, well, that's almost like saying um, the door is open. Come on in into a house, that's a strange home. Right. A stranger's house. You have to be invited. Once you get invited, when you're invited, people prepare a place for you. If you invited me to your home, uh, Melanie and Travis, you're going to make sure that the food that I eat, you're going to ask me questions. What do you drink, Earl? How do you like to live? It's the same thing in the RV industry. Well, we want to see people that look like us, that make us feel more comfortable in that space, right? Uh, and so we don't. And so with that being said, uh, I always say this, and I uh, I started this company, and we're doing amazingly well. This is not a technology. This is an opportunity, right? This is an opportunity to get more diversity and inclusion in the outdoors. And if you are an RVer in this group, honestly, if you're an RVer in any group and you don't want to see diversity and inclusion in the campgrounds, 
I got news for you. Black folks are coming to the campground. We're pushing them to the campgrounds. We want them to come to the campgrounds because we have been paying the National State Park for a few years. Yeah, but we haven't been invited to enjoy those places. And so, you know, we would like you to, we, we, I, would, let's, I wouldn't say we would like you to embrace the change. I would tell you that the change is coming and it's good. It's a good change because we want the campgrounds and the industry to look like America. We believe the campground, my company, I believe the campground and our logo is the portal for amazing communication. And I believe the fact that some of the issues we're having socially unrest in our country is because we haven't been able to communicate in an area that feels free with opinions, but respected opinions. Yes. Well, and I, I'd like to address David's question. He His question was basically, uh, I think it was what, Experiences that make what experiences ha have we had that make us feel like that? And one thing I love about camping and RVing is, is uh, like Cherie said, is just the, the, the togetherness and everybody knows everybody and hanging out. So one day my wife and I were out having a, a beverage, you know, sitting watching the sunset. So a gentleman pulled up his fifth wheel next to us and we were full time. And so we're there all the time. So he pulls up and starts talking and then he asks us, do you have a gun in there? So we're like, matter of fact, I got two in there, <laughs> you know? So I'm in Texas. I use it for protection. That's all I want it for, you know, it's for protection. So anyway, I thought that was a very inappropriate question before he even asked me my name or where we were from or anything. <laughs> he asked me if I have a gun in there. Wow. And I said, matter of fact, I got two. <laughs> so, yeah. but more totally inappropriate to me. And, and the other thing I would say is um, I've been out at the park and a person will just walk up on me and start telling me everything my husband and I did wrong instead of just saying, you know, you might want to try it this way or that way. And I understand these are all older retired folks. My dad's the same way. And if he feels like you need help, he's just going to give it to you whether you want it or not. But it was more in a condescending, like, you idiots, like, why would you do it that way? And so my immediate response, being a trial attorney, was like, well, I probably can't say it on this video, but I didn't, I, it was not a very good response. And so I would just say, if you see somebody out there and you can tell they're not used to camping or it's their first time, approach them with, what's your name? How you doing? Is there anything I can help you with? As opposed to freaking idiot, like, why would you do that? Um, and it's just the way you approach people and start a conversation. I can tell if you're coming at a, to me at a, from love or if you're coming at me from a place of, you just really don't want me around and you're just kind of trying try to find anything wrong that I'm doing. The other thing I would say, one of the experiences that we had was uh, just even shopping for an RV. We walk in a dealership and people just avoid us. Like, what are, what are you doing here? Like, are you lost? And so we just started looking around and we had done two years of research. We knew which rig we wanted and all these things. And the guy the salesman kept trying to push us to some rig we hadn't even read about or knew about. And we kept saying, oh, we don't want that. We want this over here. And he just kept trying to give us the crap on his lot. And we were like, no, we, we don't want to do that. And so we left and we went to dealership that we felt like people really wanted to engage with us and tell us the things that we did not know, but they wanted to listen to what we were looking for in an RV. And so um, that that's one of the things the dealers can do is treat everybody like they're coming in to buy the best for their family and, and move forward from there, as opposed to treating you like you can't afford it or whatever. I don't need you to worry about what I can afford. Let me worry about that. I need you right. to sell me the best paper that I'm looking for. Yeah. Well, David, David just made a statement. I, I, I'm reading the comments, and in one of the, in one of the comments, what can uh, the industry do to uh, to invite more black folks to go camping? The industry can do a whole bunch because they haven't done anything, to be frank with you. Um, like that, the, if you if you've ever gone to RV shows and you've ever wondered to yourself, what uh, have you? If you ever look around, the next time you look around, you may see more now because we're very active, but you don't see many black folks at RV shows or at mm -hmm. RV events. Well, you won't see any because the same, you know, you have most RV dealerships or most RV uh, uh, um, shows, they never advertise in, in spaces in urban uh, radio, urban TV. They never advertise in those spaces at all. Listen, 
I'm in the industry, right? And, 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 and I'm advocating for black folks to really uh, enjoy the industry, but I'm also advocating for white folks on this end to teach them as well. And I say white folks because let's just keep it real. The white folks actually control the control or really are more inundated into the, uh, not only the outdoor industry, but the RV industry. And so we have, they have to be trained as well. Like not only them, they have the, the if you look at uh, state and national parks, you know, the rangers have to be trained. So when they see a black first person out in the in the woods looking around and, and enjoying themselves, uh, those people are not bothering anyone, right? And you have to be in your questioning and your thought process, you have to be you have to make sure that you're not rubbing people the wrong way, as uh, Dana said a minute ago, making them feel uncomfortable. So again, this is not a, a marathon. I'm, I'm sorry, this is not a sprint in what we're dealing with right now. This is this is a marathon, guys. And and, and again, my company, what we, we we're taking on something really, really big. And we believe that, like I say to my staff, we have much to do. We have much to do because there are a ton of spaces that need to be filled. And if I'm and if it just yesterday, just last week, there was an article in the New York Times speaking about this. Tons of black folks feel like they, when they drive across the country and go camping, they do not feel welcome, right? And a lot of the welcome men who talk about the South, I mean, my family and I, we just went to uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We camped at a beautiful campground, and um, there were thirteen, there were 1,100 campsites. We're the only black family. Uh, whether you guys agree or disagree, we saw 66 uh, rebel flags, right? And in the South, for me, you know, that, 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 that is a sign to me point to you don't want me around, right? Even after having a conversation with you. And so for me, that, that is some of the experiences I've had uh, in the campgrounds, but in the industry itself, for me to be the only black executive in a $141 billion industry, the industry ought to be ashamed of themselves, to be frank with you. Hi. Thanks, Aaron. Three on experiences. Go ahead, Sheree. I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off. Just going to add a note on um, if we were still talking about experiences. Uh, being on the road for six years, obviously, we've had um, lots of days out here. And like I said, most of them um, have been very pleasant. Um, others, not so much. Of course, we run into it um, here and there. Uh, several times. I feel like it affects my children more than it affects me. I also feel like it, it affects my husband. Um, he's more so seen as a threat. Um, he's, he's a big black man. And, you know, people don't necessarily talk to him unless he's with the kids or he's with me. And that's usually when we're staying as a guest. A lot of our experiences have come um, and like 30% maybe we've been working at these parks. So you have more of like an inside connection, people get to know you um, and it's, it's more welcoming in that, in that manner. In the situations where we haven't been staying there, yes, the kids have run into instances where they're being like called ridiculous, ridiculous names at young ages. Like a five-year-old should never be called the N-word regardless. Like you, you wow. never, well, nobody you would never, that. never, never, but you would never assume that sending your five-year-old out to ride his scooter, he would come back like asking you like, you know, like, what is this? Like, what, what's going on? And you're like, holy shit. Like what has just happened? Like, why would anyone scream that at this child? And we've had instances like that. Um, and it, it is what it is, it, it happens, but it's not all the time. Um, I will preface that, I guess, or I should have by saying that we were in a small town in Kentucky, but I don't think that's, in, that's like a, a, a free runway to say and do as you please. I don't think that those are appropriate terms to call anyone. I don't like feel warm and fuzzy when my kids come home and ask me crazy questions about a joke they heard about, um, you know, like the best place for a black man is like hanging in a tree or something stupid like this. And then it just opens up these conversations that I was not prepared for. So as people are sharing these experiences, 
we've had several. I choose to focus on the positive rather than the negative. So I'll, I'll leave it there. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I, but I can't thank you all enough for sharing. You know, these are, you know, Very personal, maybe, stories, personal. Yeah. they may be uncomfortable to share and talk out loud, maybe not. And I'm glad you're sharing it either way. And that's the yeah. reality of it is, is understanding that these issues do exist. That's, that's the yeah. understanding part of this, right? Is there are issues in this industry and at large. Uh, but just in our industry alone, there are obviously issues. I mean, the segregation, the, the, the you know, the percentages of black people in the community are showing that. And it's not, Errol, what, Errol, what you're saying is, and, and everybody else also said, is it's not about that black people don't want to camp. There's right. obviously other issues going on here, and that's that there's there's something to be addressed there. Yeah. And one thing, uh, Dana, you said last night that, you know, it, it's something we all know, and, you know, it just needs to be said again. It's, you experience this in your everyday life and just because we're not seeing it doesn't mean it's not real so yeah I, I highly encourage everybody to educate themselves and listen to these stories and understand uh the challenges that people face that you don't face every day so you know um yes. I, I, i'm sorry Earl. just real quickly i want to respond to something i saw a comment uh jacqueline said yeah that's um, i was gonna do the same thing go ahead yeah so it, it may mean heritage to you, but I want you to understand where I'm coming from and where my family and, and how we get to where we feel. Um, we we feel and we understand that the civil right, the civil war was fought over the state's right to have slavery or not. And the Confederacy represented the side that wanted to keep my people as slaves. And you may disagree with that, but my reading of history says that that's the case. So when I see a Confederate flag flying, and I would agree with you, you have every right to fly it, but I want you to understand, I'm not gonna feel welcome because it, it's the equivalent to me of going to the uh, World Trade Center and seeing an Al-Qaeda flag or going to Pearl Harbor and seeing a Japanese flag flying over Pearl Harbor. It's the same thing to me. It's the people that tried to take you out flying the flag. So I don't feel like that's heritage. I feel like that's hate. And so if you truly want African-Americans to come camping, you're not gonna be flying those flags or you're gonna be considerate about it. You fly it inside your camper, but I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life. I'm just telling you how it's perceived from my community. Well, and I'd like to add to that. Uh, I'm a big NASCAR fan. Um, I go to one or two races every year, Talladega, and Earl. Anyway, my wife, she used to ask me, how can you go to an event that has that flag flying? I, I'm a big car person. I love cars. I love racing, anything with an engine. And it, it was tough. I mean, me and a guys, black and white, went as a group. Uh, and when we're there and you're seeing that flag flying, I'm like, am I really welcome here? Uh, or do you really want, you know, minorities in this sport or not? Um, but we went anyway because we knew that was part of it. We started going back in the middle 90s. Um, so I have to be honest. Yes, I am glad that it's no longer part of NASCAR. I know that's controversial. And uh, but as a sport, it needed to evolve. It needed to. Um, and, you know, the flag, I know they're going to fly to other places and, and everything. But as a sport, as a sport that's national, it needed to it needed to evolve, and I'm glad they did do something about it. Um, but like I said, I went to the races anyway. But yes, we did feel uncomfortable sometimes with it. Well, you know, I I didn't really want to harp on uh, on the flag situation, but I just kind of want to say one thing, and I think this right this this for me uh, sums it up for me. Listen, um, where I'm from. Um, people people say this to me a lot, you know, Earl, because I'm, I'm I'm from a good times background, but I live a huckster lifestyle, and people always say to me, "Don't forget where you come from." Well, I can never forget where I come from because the way I came from was the bottom, right? And with that being said, in regards to the flag, you know, um, if the heritage of the if the heritage that the flag if the Confederate flag embodies, and if you agree with that heritage, you and I probably don't have anything in common. Right. And that's as simple as that. Whether you white, black, green or yellow, it doesn't really matter in that space. Right. So um, so we can kind of probably nip that in the bud. But the bottom but the bottom line to all of this is this right here. The world 
the United States is changing in ways that we have to embrace, right? Either we're going to embrace some of the changes of equality, and I'm not talking about specifically about people, everyone's issues, per issues. We all have issues with certain things. But when we talk about business and we're talking about camping, right, the fact still remains the same. I, heard, I saw a comment a minute ago. Somebody said, well, they, I've seen t uh, ads uh, uh, on urban radio, on urban TV. If you know anything about advertising, urban TV is totally different from urban radio, right? Urban TV, uh, it, it, because if there's a TV show comes up, the ads are already paid for and they're already going down in the, in, they are in the slot. You have to be intentional about posting and, and uh, advertising urban radio. And I know that RV dealers have not, RV dealers in the industry is not um, advertised in urban radio because I've already done the research already. I know that for a fact. And so when I speak to you guys, I, I would like you guys to, to truly understand this. I don't speak to you guys with opinions in regards to the RV industry. I speak to you with facts. And if you want to argue the facts, then I can show you data. If you want to argue the uh, opinion, then I'm not in the mood to do that, right? Because opinions, we all have one, right? And so I um, I wanted to say that. But the last thing on that note, though, is that if, 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 if we just said a minute ago that campers are kind, campers are inviting, Campers and RVs are love, and we love everything. If anything, if, if I love you, if I love you enough, I won't do anything to hurt you, to harm you, or to make you feel uncomfortable. And the moment you try to explain how you hurt me, we have a problem, right? And so, and so however you decide to do those things, uh, I just don't think the campground, I don't care what kind of flag it is. I don't think, I don't, anything that's gonna make someone feel bad, and feel feel horrible. I, I just don't. I just don't want to do it. This is me. Yeah, and, I'm say, and, and we talked about this last night a little bit. I'm sorry, Sheree. Did you want to say something? I was gonna say something. I was gonna agree with Teal J. Um, Dana was on point with with that comparison. Like that was that was spot on. Um, you just kind of oh. covered how it makes how it makes people feel when you see the flag, and it may not be your intention, but that is how that's how we receive it. And I use I don't like to generalize, but I will say we because I've never actually met a black person who's like super you know comfortable and excited to you know be around that flag. I had my own um, situations that happened um, when I was working for an RV company um there was a lady in you know the office she's supposed to be like my right hand person you know they've invited me to this town that i have not i know nothing about it's a small town in arkansas and here i am you know we are the only black family in this entire town and you know i'm really bonding with 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 the support staff and i was invited to a co-worker's house and it's down a little tiny road somewhere where I for sure would not have turned and felt comfortable turning down this road in the dark by myself if I didn't know that she was gonna be at the end of the driveway. So I go ahead and I turn down the road and I'm approaching her property, which has very clear signage, do not enter, you are trespassing, you are not welcome here so many times. Like, I'm just like, okay. Or at least that's how it felt to me. Like, wow, I'm getting a lot of anxiety already just in this tiny town where I'm the only black person in the dark by myself um, and I'm approaching this property and I, I go on the property and I'm, I'm going past like a barn or something and I look over and there's a huge confederate flag and I was like holy like what in the world why would you invite me here why would you invite me to your property if this is the welcome that I'm going to receive and that's exactly how I took it my view of this person completely changed from that moment forward. Like I can't see, I can't see past it. And I don't know, you know, if that's how everyone feels, I can't speak for everyone, but I can't see past it. It changes how I view you. It changes how you just made me feel. And if it's not the intention, then, you know, whatever, so be it, but it, it's how it's received. But anyway, that's what I wanted to say, Dana, that was spot on your comparison with you know, Pearl Harbor and all that, that was great. Yeah. And I would just add to that, my husband always says this, that, you know, when you're trying to figure out what it is that black people want 
it's not that we want anything. We want equality. We don't want any more or any less than anyone else has. We don't want to be treated any better or any worse. We just want to be pulled over. If our tail lights out, we want to get our ticket and move on about our day. Mm. We want to get our speeding ticket and go on without getting beat down or shot. I don't right. think that's too much to ask. And so I, I think that, you know, it's like they're always angry. They're always marching. Well, we're marching because we never got up to the level of equality. We're still trying to catch up. And, right. and when we do a see, achieve a little bit of success or we make $10 more than somebody else, it feels like the, the white people think that, oh, well, they must not experience racism. That's not true. I'm a 51-year-old African-American woman who lives in East Texas. When I go to certain stores, I'm being followed. I'm being watched. And I constantly have to say, I'm not going to steal from your store. I came in here to purchase something. And that's not right. And that's all we're asking is what's right. We're, we're not trying to get anything extra. I just want what's right and, 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 and treat it like everybody else. And I think that goes for me and my husband, at least, and most of the people that we know. Yeah, we... Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, go My publicist, uh, he said to me yesterday, uh, we have a really big meeting tomorrow uh, in the industry. Um, and uh, he said to me, he said, Earl, um, what is your message tomorrow? And I said to him, listen, black folks can't too. Our name is bold. It's very out there. And it's right to the point, And it's true because black folks do camp. Right. But he said to me, he said, Earl, um, what do you plan to say? And I, and I and I, what I plan to say is and I'll say it right now is. Black folks are not looking to have uh, black power and take over the outdoors. Like, we're, we're not. We're, we're not wanting to do that. Black folk. First of all, you know, if you look where I live in the mountains of North Carolina, uh, you're not be going in those woods. I don't care if you're black, white, green, or yellow if you don't know how to navigate. And there, and there are t less than one and a half percent of black folks are going into the outdoors where I live to really navigate the uh, the woods. So my point is, is that we're going to need help. Is what I'm telling you. We're going to need help. In the RV industry, we're going to need help in the outdoor industry. We're going to need help in the kayak industry and in the skiing. We're going to need help with all that kind of stuff. And if the people who are actually in those industries, uh, which are majority are white, are not willing to uh, not only just invite us but to welcome us, then it's going to be a, a it's going to be a clash, right? It's going to be a clash, and it's, it's going to feel like that we're trying to invade. Your, your space, which really is all of our space, because the bottom line, and, and, I, and I want this to be taken and perceived in a good way. Black folks don't need permission to go camping. We don't need permission from anyone. But man, it sure feels good to be invited. It sure feels good to be invited, to be frank with you. Yeah. So. Uh, well, Earl, I like what you just said about invading space. Sometimes it felt like that when we you know, went somewhere or whatever. I, I, and I, I'd say most of the people are very, you know, welcoming and they talk and, you know, like I said, the whole argument is it's an automatic argument between your wife and you when you're backing up. We've had ours. So, but, you know, <laughs> it, it's just, it's like when we pull in, you get that look like, what are y'all doing here? <laughs> you know, and then they'll come over and start talking to us and get to know us and then everything's fine but it's getting past that initial stage of seeing that we're black african-american and and then they're like what are they doing here and then i've had people say hey how do you afford a truck and a trailer like that or something i'm like well hell i worked my butt off went to college and you know got my own business so yeah but i started to say that's none of your damn business in the first place you know so Stuff like that, you know, it's like an interrogation or something like that when you go out sometimes just to see if you fit in or if you're there doing something else or whatever. I'm there just like everybody else, me and my wife. We're there to have a good time and enjoy the outdoors, and that's all we want. Hey, um, Wendy, one thing, Wendy, um, oh, okay. I just wanted to ask, I'm gonna address something. Hey, Wendy, um, I see some of the comments there. Um, let me let me address this too. I think this is probably preference, and, and Wendy, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna apologize to you for one thing. Uh, only be only. I'm gonna apologize for this part. When we, I think everybody on this call are pretty. You know, we're adults, right? And and we 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 also understand that when we when we say white folks and white people, we're not grouping all white people. That would be saying right, right. that we're grouping all black folks. We're not doing that, right? And I think that you know, if you're feeling that way, if you're on the other end of this conversation and you can't voice your opinion, 
and you feel like we're I'm addressing you, uh, all white folks, I want to say to you, we're not doing I'm not doing that. Right. I don't think anybody in this in this panel was doing that. I think we're, no, we're talking no, about from our experiences. Uh, it would be the same way when I talk about black folks. I know that all black folks don't camp. I know that all black folks won't camp. I know that all black folks don't have any desire to camp. But that doesn't necessarily mean they shouldn't have the opportunity to camp and be invited into the industry, uh, especially state and national campgrounds, which we pay for every day. Right. And, and it wasn't until 1964 or 66 in the South that black folks were able to enjoy state and national parks. And that right there is a problem. Right. But it's now an opportunity for us to uh, move past and work our way to uh, new opportunities. Sheree, I think you were about to say something. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. I was going to address Wendy as well. Um, address Wendy as well. I just wanted her to know that I do not feel that people are trying to be like all inclusive when they say white people or black people. I try not to use such broad brushes as Debbie put it uh, in her recent comment. Um, but yeah, I didn't want her to feel like, I don't know, I didn't want her to feel offended. I get it. Um, we're saying, you know, we're saying white people and black people, it seems all inclusive, but really you're talking about a, a select group of that, of that race. And yeah, I, I was just going to address it. I, I had a, a quick question and I know we're, we're coming close to, to time, but uh, I saw some posts in the in the chat room what can uh what can we do as a as an RVing community as as individuals and or as organizations to promote greater diversity equity and inclusion i mean i could speculate but you know owing to the nature that this is a listen and learn yeah earl you want to take this i, I didn't really hear the question give me that question again I'm sorry. Um, what what can we do uh, in the RV community as individuals or as organizations oh, good. to okay. promote greater diversity, equity, and inclusion? I, I could speculate, but yeah, you know, this this is a really good question. I'm so glad you asked that question because, as you guys probably have seen uh, throughout the country in the last 15 days, or actually the last five or six days, every con company in America now is having a kumbaya moment right or or uh, or a moment of saying oh we we gotta we gotta do this we we have to do this well some of those things should have been done in the first place right but the, the the thing is is this when you talk about black folks in the outdoors in the in the rv industry you, you have to go back to the root of this right and the root of it is is that this is not a race thing guys at all this is a cultural learning opportunity for everyone Right. The more black folks start at a younger age to want to camp, the more they'll tell their children and they'll tell their children. And then the generational fears will then be removed. But the, the, the thing is, is that, you know, when you don't grow up doing something, you don't want to do it. So what I think the industry and I think what you guys can do for us as a company, and I don't think it's what you can do for us, is what our company can do for you. And what we can do is we can help you with content. We can help you with real life stories. We can help you put you in a position where your message to want to see more uh, uh, black folks uh, out in the outdoors. We can help you teach young folks uh, all over the country about the outdoors and what it does and how it performs and, and, and then not to be afraid. And what will happen is, again, we have to start at the bottom because young folks can't buy RVs. Right. Their parents. If they haven't been in that lifestyle, it's less likely they're going to buy an RV. But there's nothing that says they can't go camping, right? And most people went on this call, and if I can, if most people on the call, the panel, and also uh, in the comments, you probably been tent camping before. And if you haven't, you know that's probably a little bit different. But most folks have had a starting a starting point. And our company, we focus on the beginning, the middle, and the end when it regards to uh, the the, uh, the camping industry. We backpack, we tent camp, we RV, we uh, kayak, we do it all, right? But we want you guys to know uh, that uh, 
we can help if you if you truly say to yourself, you know, it, what you've already said is why we're on this panel that you want to do something to really make outdoors uh, more diverse and inclusive. We have the formula to do that for you, right? We 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 we've been doing this uh, for a while, and um, and quite frankly, oh, we're pretty good at it. To be honest with you, uh, we're good at what we do, and we get results. We're an ROI type company, right? That's what we are. That means return on investment, by the way. For both <laughs> people. Yeah, no, and I can't thank you guys enough. You know, I, I, I think it's okay if we go over, unless one of the marketing teams tell us that there's other reasons not to, but I'm, I'm comfortable like with going a few months so over. Just, this is a really great conversation yeah. um, if you guys are good with doing that. And, I, you know, I think I kind of see this as like, I, I thought of this earlier, and to me, this reminds me of a lot of like getting to that perfect unknown boondocking spot, right? Like out in the boonies. You're like, I've never been there before. I've heard, seen pictures. It looks amazing but it's like 10 miles down a dirt road. And I don't really know how to get there, but we're going to figure it out, right? We're going to take this turn. We're going to have a lot of communication along the way. We're probably going to hit some potholes. We might get a little tussle, but eventually we're going to get there and then we're going to find ourselves in this beautiful location and we're all going to enjoy it, right? That's what families do, man. Families families tussle all the time, right? <laughs> families tussle, families wrestle, but families work it out. And if the RV industry, the camping industry are truly say we're family, well, those things happen and you work those things out, right? Yeah. right? Enemies never talk to each other. Enemies never want to be around one another because they know what happens. But when you're family, you find ways to jail, come together and find a solution and have a happy life. That's right. Well, and I know uh, we wanted to talk about Black Lives Matter on here. Um, when we first got on, I noticed a lady said Black Lives Matter is a criminal organization. No, it's not. It, it is not a criminal organization. They're not anti-cop. They're not anti-anything. Um, they want equal rights for everybody. It's just right now we're talking about us, and that's where it needs to be focused at right yeah. now. They're not saying yeah. only Black Lives Matter. Yeah. They're saying Black Lives Matter, too. You right, know, can, right, that and way. and that's what I, me and my wife, we went to a rally here in Livingston last week, and it was more white people there than it was black people there, and it's really touching to see everybody being involved in this, and there was no violence, there was no rioting, there was no looting, there was nothing like that, and our sheriff was there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and and we know all most of the cops in Livingston, and we were sitting there talking, and and. I mean, we're all getting along and everything, but I just want to say that Black Lives Not Matter is not a terrorist organization. It's not a criminal organization. It's just something just like civil rights in the 60s. We're just trying to, to be treated fairly. We don't want anything more, anything less. We just want to be treated fairly. Me and my wife, uh, we went to college. We did everything we're supposed to do. And when I get pulled over, I want to be treated just like the guy down the street from me. And one example is, my wife and I, uh, our daughter's boyfriend came over and they were down the street at the park a few weeks ago. So we went to go get something to eat. And how come when we left, we're thinking, oh, my God, should we leave them? Is something going to happen to them while we're there? And a lot of people don't have to worry about that. But we do. You know, and we have to talk to our kids about different instances um, that may happen. Um, so, not so they can not be embarrassed or whatever. So they can come home alive. It's a different conversation. And we just need you to understand, it. even if you don't experience it, just know that it's real. It's very real for us. Yeah, and, and I shouldn't have to worry about my child walking down the street. And we live in a nice neighborhood. and But it's just that fear of when they leave your site, something may happen. And yes, we have to have that talk with them. I have two girls. Um, and my dad had with me when I was younger. And I went to college in a town that wasn't just very welcoming of me. I got pulled over a lot for no reason. They just pulled me over, checked my license, let me go. And Dana, she experienced that too when we started dating in college. So she's like, why are you getting pulled over so much? I was like, I got a car and I'm driving, <laughs> you know? So anyway, that's what Black Lives Matter is. We just want to be treated equally, no better, no less, just fairly in the, in the justice system, basically. Is that all lives matter, but black lives are under attack at this moment. I think that's the conversation. Black lives are being threatened. And mm -hmm. we're trying to make the point like for those lives, those black lives that are not being 
judged as being equal to a white life, they matter too. It, we're not saying only black lives matter. You're saying, hey, like we matter as well. Um, so yeah, I totally get that. And I wanna add on that point that you getting pulled over, over and over. I fear this with my husband all the time. Like we're RVing, but we're currently stationary and he works like a normal job and he has to go to this normal job. And just recently when we were put under this crazy curfew, like I had four kids in here who could not like get past that. They were so scared that their father wasn't gonna come home because the curfew was initiated at 5.30 and it was 5.25 when he found out. And we we're like, oh shit, he's not making it home. Like what could possibly happen on his way home? Like. Black people have to worry about that more. Black men, definitely more than black women. Um, those who are darker skin have more problems than lighter skin. Those who are mixed, I saw a comment in here, um, a lady who's married to a black man and she's got mixed kids. I grew up with a white mother. My father's black, but he wasn't in the picture. I definitely see race different than other people. Like my husband, he grew up on the other side of the track. We grew up on this one. He grew up on the other side. We see race completely different. And he has to deal with things that are completely different than I do. But it doesn't make it any less real. Hey, Sharif, good points. Hey, guys, I have two two lasting things, I promise, because I... I, uh, I'm long-winded here. I have two things. Number one, my company, Black Folks Camp 2, we shouldn't even exist, to be frank with you. Our company shouldn't exist. We shouldn't. We shouldn't we're out of business. Right? We shouldn't exist, number one. right? And then the other thing is, we want you, everyone on this call, everyone uh, in, the, in your group, we, our Facebook page is open. When you go to Black Folks Camp 2, whether you white, black, green, or yellow, if you have to, if you have to join, that page is a data page. You don't want to, you don't want to even get in that page, right? That's a data page. We have another a page that's Black Folks Camp Two, and it has our logo in it. You can like it. You are automatically in our uh, on our site. We want you to see what we're doing. We want you to encourage us to, uh, like other folks are doing, to encourage diversity in the outdoors. We want you to go to our website, Black Folks Camp. Two.com. Go to our website, read our website, listen to our podcast. Because what I'm saying to you right now, listen, I know what I'm talking about. I've been in this thing and I've been digging and I've been driving it. And I want you guys to be educated, right? And that way, when you speak to someone else, a person of color, it'll help you understand what they're dealing with, especially in the outdoor industry. And the last thing, in every relationship, and this is probably everybody needs to understand this. And I and I have to really understand this was i'm a i should have been an attorney attorney uh dana um we, we <laughs> i have the attorneys on the call then I know. Uh, <laughs> on. Right on. everybody on this call this is the one thing i had to learn in regards to race relations relations or anything sometimes and most of the time man i'd rather be happy than right i'd rather be happy than right all the time right and so with that being said guys we, I would like the outdoors to be a happy place. You know, you we we all have opinions, and let's go. Uh, let's go RVing. Let's go enjoy the outdoors. We can't go to hotels. So you may as well go enjoy the outdoors, man. The outdoor industry, the outdoor industry, RV industry is up is sixty percent right now. When they thought they're going to be down nineteen percent, can you understand that? Yeah, yeah. it's it's. They can't well, make enough RVs right now. I'd like to touch on Charity had a, a question. Oh. Uh, her question was, what as us as white folk can do? <laughs> My thing is, hey, just be yourself. If you want to come over and talk to us or whatever, that's fine. Sit down and have a beer, talk, whatever. That That's it. I mean, we love when we're out there. We love in the evening sitting back and just talking with everybody, getting to know everybody. Because everybody knows at a campsite that your neighbor could be going next and it's another neighbor that pulls in. Right. So that's what we love, meeting people from all around. And it didn't matter what color or nationality or whoever they were from, wherever they were from, we just like meeting people. You know, we like to travel, we like the outdoors. Hey, if you like car racing, whatever it is, we like to meet you. And that's it. Just sit down and talk to us like you would anybody else. That's, and we, that's and the we main like thing. learning about products that work. 
So if you got yeah. a product that you know really works well, I know we were using whatever, and somebody came up with some Happy Camper, that made my whole week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you love getting ideas on what, you know, stuff. Her, her thing, she didn't like dealing with the black tank. That was my thing. No. <laughs> And we each had our thing. So each couple, married couple, had their deal. And, and it was funny talking to each other, like the backing up thing, stuff like sure. that. So it, it's funny hearing stories like that. But, it, hey, just come talk to us like you would anybody else. And that's what we're, we're wanting. It, it's fortunate that the RV community is is very willing to share yeah. their <laughs> tips. Yeah. <laughs> Almost whether you like it or not, yeah. you're going to get tips. <laughs> and some of them worked, some of them didn't. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, uh, so I mean we are getting close to you know probably needing to wrap this up. I do want to open you know for any final thoughts, obviously that anybody has at this point, um, you know before we wrap it up, and then just to say, obviously this conversation we plan to continue. You know this this conversation holds us accountable uh, and, and to and to make change in some fashion. We don't think it'll happen overnight per se. You know, dramatic dramatic change, but we are we we really aim to work towards that and to listen and learn and make changes. That's that's what this is, this conversation is about. So just from the bottom of our hearts and the entire escapees, the board of directors, we just want to say thank you guys so much for joining us, taking this time to share your personal experiences. It's a, it's a really heavy conversation and we realize there's a lot to it. And that's a lot more. What we're saying is that we don't see this as a one and done. And obviously we met with you guys last night and we leave every time thinking there's so much more we could talk about. There's so much more we can learn. There's so much more we can do. Um, to be better. So thank you guys very much. And thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, we want to thank you guys. It's a tough conversation. I mean, but both Dan and I have had friends call us over the last couple of weeks and sat down talking about it. So it's a tough conversation, but it's a conversation that needs to be had and open and honest communication. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I fixing his hats like he's changing hats like every two minutes over there. Uh, I love it. I'm just gonna <laughs> if you tell me like hat, make sure they know all the ones and they have to go to the website to order some. Ooh. <laughs> now, now what's happening in the chat is that people are waiting <laughs> I'm just gonna slip in this last little thank you because I I see Camille Camille Attell is in this in these comments and her and Debbie Bradford, I see them in these comments, and I'm just so thankful for people who have gone outside of their comfort zone. People like Escapees, you guys posted, and you opened that conversation. Like you took a stand, and I mean, it's welcome, but it's kind of sad how few you saw inside the RV community. Like I did not see another one come out that was inside the RV community besides escapees um so i just i thought that as far as clubs go i just thought that was like wow like this is really saying something like not everyone's gonna agree with it i get it not everyone's for it um but it's really awesome to see um just people who are saying like hey like we are right there with you we are inclusive um and we we want that diversity so i really i just really appreciate it so thanks Thank you, Shri. Uh, Thanks, Shri. Honestly, yeah. you can thank Joe and Kay Peterson, the founders. We're living on their values of inclusion yeah. and, and equity yeah. and, and diversity. So you, this is us just carrying that belief forward in this this club is that's literally its core value. So yeah. um it that was great. Yeah. yeah, that was very well said. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, yeah, so any any other last closing remarks before we, we close it down. I, we obviously we're gonna follow up with you guys after this and uh, you know, continue the conversation in some fashion. Hopefully you'll you'll continue to communicate with us and, and, and talk with us. So, um, but yeah. until then, yeah, yeah. We can't hey, thanks to everybody in the, in the chat room, yeah. you know, because oh, there, yeah. was, there was a vigorous and honest, All right. You know, <laughs> at, at times uncomfortable, but you know, uh, as yeah. they, as they taught us over and over again in, uh, in law school, reasonable minds can differ. Right. That's right. Exactly. You know, exactly. And, and as long as work, we, man. Let's get the word. Let's talk that talk and walk that walk, though. You know, yeah, let's get talk the walk. And, uh, and 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 let's drive this thing. And and so that you guys won't be clustered into some of the companies that I know are going to be clustered into. That said, oh, we did send out an email and it was nice. We had a panel. Now let's get back to our holes because I won't allow you guys to do that anyway. Yeah. Right? Hold us accountable. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. 
I got an email right now. You're right now. Don't worry. <laughs> all right. I hope to see you guys all down the road. Stay safe out there and uh, stay sane too. So yes. we love stay you all. Safe. Take, take Thank care. Thank y'all. Bye -bye. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.